I'm having a conversation with someone right now who English is not her second language. She's 22. And she asked me through our, you know, network of people and clients and, you know, probably one of her parents is a client. And she said, I want to know how I can, I can make more money. She's in college right now. She's studying, studying, studying. She's a good student. And, and so <clears throat> what, why do you go to college? People say, so I can get a good job. <laughs> So I started the conversation with her like this. I said, so would you like to know how to make some more money uh, without really working a job? You do have to work at it. You know, there's effort, but you don't have to work hour by hour. You can make more money by doing something that serves other people and do it effectively. <clears throat> so she says, of course, everybody does. So I wanted to get that affirmation from her first. That's how I start. And so I asked her, I said, so imagine I give her the hypothetical situation. Uh, she's like a technical type person. But I said, imagine if a person wants to be a veterinarian, <clears throat> he would go to school and learn to be a veterinarian. And then he would become qualified. He would test out. And then he would qualify for, a, let's say, a state license to become a veterinarian. And she says, yeah. <clears throat> so then I asked the smart ass question. And that right after that, he's going to start making $100,000 a year, right? And she said, I don't know. They probably make that much. And I said, well, how is he going to make that money? Just because he's qualified doesn't mean he's going to get paid. How does he get paid? How does he get customers? He's he's helping pets, right? Dogs, cats, all this stuff. And so she said, oh, well, he has to advertise. Ah, he has to tell people that he's a veterinarian. Okay, so we got that much. And so I said, well, how would he, then how would he carry out the service? Let's say someone came along and said, oh, I need you to help my puppy. And so what would he do? And she goes, and she's, her response was, now this is a 22 year old. Her response was online. This is where people's minds are today. They think everything, the world works for their phone. And I said, so he's going to, he's going to have me provide a veterinary service online. How, how is he going to do that? I can't touch the dog. I'm the doctor. I have to touch the dog. I have to talk to him, whatever doctors do. I don't know what veterinarians do. <clears throat> she said, oh, well, uh, yeah, he's got to take him into the office. So I said, what office? Oh, you mean I have to lease a space? I can't work out of my college dorm? You know, you no, know, I got to lease a space. So I'm getting her to think, oh, there's all these things that go along with it. It's not just enough to be educated, which is what she's doing. She's being educated. I want her to become educated about how this actually works in the real world. So there's all these elements to get to a point where you can get paid for your educational qualifications. So you have to advertise, bring the customer in, you have to bring them into a facility where you can provide the service. You gotta have equipment, you gotta have a lease agreement, that all costs money. So which, how do we do this? If we're still a student and we're not making money yet, but we need the money to make the money, how does that work? And she quickly said, well, we use an investor. <laughs> so I said, excellent answer, very good answer. You know, so um, I ended the conversation because basically this is a conversation I'm having with her. OK, and I just ended and I said, OK, that's good for today. We'll we'll talk some more tomorrow. That's a good answer. But I'm going to I'm going to show you some things and you're going to come up with better answers later because there are better answers. <clears throat> so what I was going to show her, we, she's not going to hear this call, but uh, what I want to sh share with you all as I'm going to share with her is that the aspects of making money involve these elements. There's the there's the product, like in her case, it's the professional who's qualified. And there's the marketing. It's bringing that prospective customer or client or patient to the qualified professional. And then providing the service. And you need a facility for that. And it costs money. You need a maybe a lease agreement, right? Office space, all this stuff. <clears throat> so you have the professional. You have the facility, okay? the business operations, and then those are housed in real estate. So you have three things going on there. Three opportunities. There's the professional who spent many years to get qualified to do the thing. Then the business itself, the operations, right? The front desk, the receptionist, the software, the computers, you know, the equipment, whatever. And then you have the place where it operates, which is the real estate. So what I will get to with her and I will explain to you all is that a veterinarian, that type of service, if I want to be a veterinarian, the way I look at it is I would like to own 
the veterinarian. I would like to own the business because if I own the business, then I can have four veterinarians that are much smarter than me do a really good job and I can make sure they're doing a good job. And so now I'm getting to help pets, animals, right? Through people that are really qualified to do it. And I do it under my terms and I can be the investor. I can be the business owner. So I, I will own effectively. I will own the labor, okay? Now I can also be the real estate investor. I can own the shopping center where this business operates. That's another way to look at it. So it goes back to the um, the old the statement I made, the smart ass comment that is, I dropped out of college after two years because I realized that I could just hire the guy next to me once he graduates. I don't need to graduate. I'll just hire that guy. He's a better student than me. So I'm saying it that way to you so that you can think effectively about using your money, investing your money, and getting things done. Um, I worked at Motorola where they had all the uh, engineers, really the, the smart, smart people. Uh, and they were so smart that they were going to keep that job forever. <laughs> and yeah, they're making six figures or more now, uh, but that's all they're going to do. They're not going to ever own that process. They're just going to be discounting their labor to the employer who's going to be marketing their services. You can do it, no problem, but just understand what you're doing. When you go get a job somewhere, you're 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 selling your labor at a discount. Someone's getting the profit. They're profiting from you not asking or not able, being not able to get more money for your labor. Why? Why can you not get more money for your labor? Because someone else is taking on the expense of marketing your services. <laughs> and he's figured out how to do it at a profit. You're not involved with profit. You're involved with selling your labor on an hourly basis or whatever, right? A, a timely basis. So you're you're gonna have to discount your labor because guess what? You're not the only one doing it. Just like in China, the problem with China is there's too many people doing the same job. So that's why the labor costs are so low. That's why we export our manufacturing to China and Vietnam and these places in Taiwan. So just realize that's going on, okay? No problem with getting a job somewhere. You're discounting your labor, but you wanna still have some, allocate some of your money so that you're you're owning something and not working by the hour to get it. You can still keep your day job, you know, just realize that's how things operate. You know, I just want to share that with you all.